there YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to change the oil on your Generac generator. First you have to warm it up for a minute or two and then you got to take off the front housing bolts once you turn it off. You can turn it on with the manual button. And the housing bolts are 8 millimeter. So when you're taking it off, uh, I didn't know this because it didn't say it in the manual, but uh, you have to disconnect this ground that's attached to the front panel that you take off and it attaches right here to this wire just pushes in there alright so I'm gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal not the positive to make sure it doesn't kick out when I'm working on it you don't want to do the positive because it's uh, negative ground so if you bump the wrench on the frame it'll spark so uh, yeah negative all right I gotta go handheld on this one uh, you'll see there's an oil drain hose right here it's clamped in just kind of lift it out of there and there it is there's the end and take this nut off and then you can drain the oil out for the oil hose you're gonna need a 5 8 wrench and a 11 16 a wrench to twist them. That does not look good. But there's no antifreeze, so I don't know how it's milky. Uh, I'll have to Google that. And let this drain. And now I'm going to use a strap clamp. It's actually, I think, a gator grip or something. It's like a rubber thing to take off the oil filter. coating the oil filter with a slight bit of oil. Alright, I'm going to put the cap back on the drain hose now. The genuine, gen yeah, the genuine Generac kit even comes with a funnel. Using Mobile One Synthetic 5W30. little piece of paper was about to rip off and go into the engine. So, I guess I'll do it the old fashioned way. And sometimes you get ticks on you. Fuck off, tick. God damn it. Get out of me. All right, on mine it has cross hatches. On yours it might have um, a hole in the top for full, like right above where my full line is. Uh, either way, just fill it up. And true to the manual, I used one entire quart plus. This one has about 300 milliliters remaining. 
so I used 1.7 quarts. All right, oil part's done. The air filter is pretty straightforward. Twist off the two things on the top and replace the air filter. This one is old. This one is new. You can't barely tell the difference because it's not a car. But there's little fibers here that are in this air filter that this one does not have. So it caught something. And I haven't changed this air filter in four, wait, was it 2012? Six years. All right, now time for the suckiest part, the spark plug. This one's easy. It's a 3-8 spark plug. That is scary. Here's my old one. My old one doesn't actually look that bad, but since it's not gasoline, I don't know what bad really looks like. Here's the new one. The gaps look the same. All right, doing good. Uh, old one is a Champion RC14 YC4. The new one is RC14 YC4. So same one. Alright, I don't have any dielectric grease, but you should definitely use it if you have it. Just be more prepared than I am. Alright, and the last spark plug, the second spark plug, is on the exact opposite of the engine. You can see it down here. It's a pain to get to. I'm not looking forward to it, and I'm definitely not going to be able to get it on camera. So, I'll give you tips after I'm done. And here's my other spark plug condition. To get it out I had to use a 3 8 spark plug socket with a 3 8 union and a 3 8 wrench. And I made sure that this was straight because if you try to take out a spark plug and it's cocked you might shear it off in the head which is exactly the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> Alright, and don't forget to put the spark plug boots back on until they click. Alright, now it's time to wrap it up. Uh, go ahead, make sure you got oil in the engine, spark plugs in, boots on, oil filter on, air filter on, cap on drain plug, drain hose stored away and then reconnect your negative side of the terminal put the cover back on